the story of the birth of Jesus. So, so wonderful how Jesus was born. When he first was born, nobody knew what was happening. Nobody realized what was happening. But the greatest story, this birth of Jesus, long-awaited Messiah, angels announced his arrival. For the past 400 years prior, in fact, 500 years, there was nothing, no prophecy. There was silence between the end of the Old Testament, Malachi, and the beginning of Matthew in the New Testament. God seemingly was silent. There was nothing, no prophecy, no blessing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, the Bible uses the word suddenly. All of a sudden, these lowly shepherds were minding their business, tending sheep, when all of a sudden an angel, possibly Gabriel, the greatest of them all, showed up and the entire place lit up. And the Bible tells us that they were frightened. I would be too. Because whenever God manifests himself into something that we can see, whenever God is visible to man, whenever an angel is visible, the Shekinah glory accompanies. Whenever an angel appears in the Old Testament, not very, very many times, but those occasions where the angel of God appeared, the glory of God himself appeared. And we are told in the Bible today, in this narrative in the book of Luke chapter 2, when one angel showed up, these shepherds in the fields were absolutely frightened. But it says that a multitude of the host of heavenly angels Angelic host appeared. We have no idea how many angels there were. But can you imagine at night they are tending sheep? One angel showed up and they were frightened. They panicked over one angel. But the number multitude, as we see in Jesus, when he ministered to people and multitudes of people came to him. We're not exactly sure how many is a multitude, maybe 5,000, maybe 10,000. We do know. That in the book of Revelation, they, it talks about angels in terms of 10,000 times 10,000. Because to the Greeks, 10,000 was the highest number that they had. So if you multiply 10,000 by 10,000, you have something like 100 million. And that's not even just, that's not whole. That's just a representative of the angelic angels in heaven. And these angels all came. Why? Because when the shepherds were frightened, they said, do not be afraid. Why not? Do not be afraid because today a Savior is born to you, a Savior in the town of David. He is Savior. Not only is He a Savior, He is Lord. Be safe from what, you might ask. Some people say people are unfulfilled. They have marital problems. They have situations at school. Like they want to be rich, but they're not. They're not satisfied. They're not fulfilled. They want to go to Hawaii on a vacation, but all they can afford is a couple of days in Tijuana. They just are unfulfilled. What's wrong with Tijuana, you say? Because they want something more. What's wrong with what we have here? When I got married, I wanted to go to Catalina Islands, thinking that that was a place where we could have our honeymoon. The person on the other end of the line of the telephone laughed and couldn't help me because there is no such a thing there at that time anyway, many years ago. I remember that. But we have this unfulfilledness, this emptiness, this void. People think that Jesus came to fulfill this void, that, that unfulfilled heart. Some people think that Jesus came to save our uncontrollable habits, whether it be an addiction to alcohol or, or whatever else. Maybe it's lust, maybe it's pornography, whatever it is that we have trouble 
controlling these things. People think that Jesus came to save us from these things, to fill us this emptiness, this unfulfilled heart and desire or lust. But the main reason why Jesus came is that he came to save us from our sin. Amen. Jesus came to save us from our sin. Not only is Jesus our Savior, He is our Lord. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is the crux of Christianity. We have no trouble accepting Jesus as our Savior, that He died for us, that He is our Savior. But the problem is, Jesus Christ is Lord, meaning Lord, the Christ is the translation of the Hebrew. It means Messiah. It is translated as Messiah, Christ, the anointed one. He is the Messiah, meaning that the name was given only to God himself. Jesus Christ is equal to God. The second person of the Trinity, these angels knew from eternity past, when they knew the humanity failed, they knew that God had to choose Jesus to die on the cross and knew that one day people will be saved. And that moment, that evening, that night was that precise moment. That's why they were singing. Why were they singing? They were singing, number one, because that's all they do. Angels, number one job, the only job, only job for angels, they are always singing, praising God. And they are saying, praise God, glory to God, glory to God, and peace to men, peace on earth. Glorious day has now come. Savior has been born to you, to you, personally to you. He has been born to you. These angels were so excited, and now we must join these angels in praising God. What glorious occasion Christmas is. Every day ought to be Christmas. Every day ought to be celebrated because Jesus Christ is born. This king, it starts out in verse 1. It it passed. It came to pass. It happened. It happened on this day. It didn't happen because the king or the governor of Syria decided to make a decree, making people to come up to their hometown to give a census for tax purposes. This was decreed eternity past by our eternal heavenly father. He decreed that one day at a certain time, at a certain place, His son, child, Christ Jesus, would be born and to save the world. It was not orchestrated by any human being. It was done all by the sovereignty of God, by the power of God. Jesus Christ is a factual, historical person. This story does not begin with once upon a time. It is not a fairy tale. It is history. It came to pass. It actually was at a place, a town, a city. In Bethlehem was Jesus born. People did not recognize him at first. Ladies and gentlemen, the first time he came, they saw They saw him in a little manger, a food trough. They came to see a weak, weak human. Ladies and gentlemen, the next time he comes, he will come as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The first time when he came, he received gifts by few people. The next time he comes, he is going to bring gifts to give to all of the faithful people who will be waiting for his arrival. The first time he came, he was humiliated. He came into the world in humiliation. He went out of this world in humiliation at the cross. But the next time he comes, he's going to come with blazing glory, with the fullness of every entire universe being lit up. He's going to come. Every knee will going to bow. Every tongue will going to confess that Jesus is Lord. If there's any person here today that knows Jesus to be a Savior, that you understand about the good news that He offers, but that you refuse to make Him Lord of your life, 
I want to tell you that this is the crux of Christianity because unless Christ is Lord, that means He is God Himself. If He is anything less than God, then He has no business saying that He's our Savior. In fact, we must not be sitting here wasting our time. Yes, this romantic ways of the lights and Christmas and carols and all of that, great. But if this is all it is, at the end, we are not going to heaven, that there is no eternal life because Jesus is not equal to God. He's not just a child that was born from a physical parent. In fact, he was born from the Holy Spirit, virgin birth. That is a critical, central message of the gospel. We, the Protestants, we Christians, Churches everywhere who worship Jesus, not because he is less than God, we worship him because he is equal to God. In every essence, form, he is equal. He is the exact duplication. He is the visible image of the invisible God. He created everything. Nothing has been made that was not made. He has created everything. Jesus is the creator. He is, he is above all things. Augustus, Caesar Augustus. It says here, the Caesar was a grand nephew of Julius Caesar. And the word Augustus means eminent, supreme. It's, it, it means the highest. And the Jews really hated anyone other than God being called this, especially kings. At that time, Rome was in control of the Jews, and they called themselves August, the august one, the holy, supreme, high, eminent, all that great stuff. It actually, Augustus, Jesus Augustus was lying in a manger. It is Jesus who must be recognized as king and lord. No earthly king, no earthly empire will outdo the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ is not just a man, but he is God Almighty himself. It is Jesus whom we celebrate. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father except through him. Jesus is the only way to God. Merry Christmas to all of you. May the story of Christmas be ever so new in your hearts. May you take this message of Jesus to your hearts, and may you go out into the world. You come in to worship, but you leave to spread, to share, to witness, to evangelize the love of Christ. May God richly bless you, every one of you. I will continue this perhaps next week, but I'm done for now. Amen. Let's pray.